Excuse me, what the heck is a Telus Spark? If I was going to make fun of a car, I would make fun of the Chevy Spark. TELUS is, you know, a, a part of the Canadian telecommunications oligopoly, not part of the American automaker oligopoly, all right? There's, two, there's a lot of oligopolies, and some of you are getting it twisted, okay? By the way, the rumors of React Court's death are greatly exaggerated. Am I the you-know-what, because I do not want to swear early in the YouTube video, AITA for telling my parents that they ruined... New Year's celebration after they kicked my husband out over a joke, okay? Can I, b before we even get started on this one, can I tell you something? New Year's, not one of my favorite holidays. I, th this year, hey, let me put it this way. I, a, a better way to describe it, I think New Year's is predominantly a holiday for younger people, which is fine. I think if you're between the ages of 15 and like, how old am I, 34? Let's say 33, then that, that's your New Year's window. I'm officially past my New Year's window. I did not even consider staying up to, to 12 this year for New Year's. I sell it, and you know what? I'm realizing now, I didn't even talk about it. We're like a week into the New Year now. I celebrated New Year's at 9 p.m., I'm on the West Coast. I celebrated when the East Coast ball dropped. And only now am I realizing that I didn't even put like an asterisk. I was like, that's New Year's. I'm now forcing myself to look at myself in the mirror and being like, no, that was 9 p.m. I started my New Year like three hours earlier. Anyway. It's just, listen, I'm not being a hater. It's just one of those like... Uh, it's like, for most people, New Year's is like, it's a holiday where you just have an excuse to, like, get hammered. Come on. Like, don't lie. Not that many people my age are staying up to midnight on, like, a, a random day, unless they got at least a couple of flutes of champagne in them. It's basically like a, it's a quarter one St. Patrick's Day. Anyway, regardless, I should move on here. <laughs> I've been married to my second husband, Mike, for four years now. He's a jokester and loves to crack jokes all the time. This post is written by Mike, and uh, you know what? From now on, let's just call him Open Mike. He especially likes to joke with my brother, Ethan, and his wife. Ethan used to be okay with it till he started complaining about Mike taking it too far with his jokes. Some context about Ethan. He and his wife couldn't have kids, so they adopted a boy, Joey, two years ago. Mike has been making silly, lighthearted jokes that involve Joey's bio parents as a way to mess with Ethan and his wife. Okay, Mike is, uh, he's a social terrorist. That is over the line. You got to read the room? I already talked to Mike, and I, he 100% means no harm. The joke is that, what if he meant harm, though? The joke is like, you know I'm a good guy, so I can joke about stuff that's like not acceptable because I'm just joking. So fast forward to New Year's Eve, my parents hosted a big celebratory dinner and Ethan and his wife came. While we were eating dinner, Mike decided to tell a knock-knock joke to Ethan. Knock-knock, who's there? Mike replied, Joey's bio parents, then he bursted out laughing. That's the joke? There's not even a punchline? The joke is just that your child's adopted? And that's humorous for some reason? Don't type I can't as if, the <laughs> it's <laughs> as if there's some humor in there. An argument ensued, and dinner was paused. My parents told Mike to leave, which I thought was too harsh. I tried to speak to them and get them to calm down. My mom insisted that Mike leave. We left, and Mike was complaining the whole time about how they overreacted. What? They just kicked you out of dinner as a joke? Oh, all of a sudden, you can't take a joke. I see how it is. When you say something offensive, you want everybody to just relax. When they say something offensive, your feelings get hurt. I called mom later. She told me Mike was out of line with his hurtful jokes about this touchy subject and I was wrong for defending him. She said he ruined New Year's for the family, but I told her it was her and dad who ruined New Year's celebration for escalating the situation and kicking him out. I told her he could talk to them, but again, they were the ones who ruined New Year's. She called me delusional for this statement and hung up. We haven't talked to them for days. I tried contacting Ethan, but no response. This is the, it's a gimme. It's, listen, you would still probably be the asshole if the joke was funny, but there's no joke. It's probably fake, don't get me wrong. It's, in, I would, it's either fake or it's written by Mike. Let's put it that way. 
But like, there's no joke. Knock, knock, who's there? Your kid's birth parents? That's just like, it's just really hurtful. For no, like, it's not, the, the statement itself is not even that hurtful. It's the fact that, that he thinks it's funny, thus implying, like, there's something to be ashamed of that you adopted a kid that makes it, like, ten times more offensive. She is married to Eric Cartman. You're not wrong. Like, the joke doesn't make sense. If it made sense, I might be inclined to at least be like... Because we talk about it in React Court all the time. Sometimes you're like, you know... A very common React Court situation is... Hello, Sinvicta, by the way. Hello. A very common React Court situation is like somebody with something that they might consider a flaw is overly critical of someone else, and then you get that little demon in your head that's like... Say like, hey, maybe you should lose 30 pounds before you judge other people. And there's, a li I think you can at least acknowledge like that there's some respect, you know, some, some relatability at least. This one is just not even humorous. It's basically just like, I'm a, I'm a jerk. So I'm going to give that a, a no. I'm going to give that a, you're the ass. There's nothing more to touch upon here. I mean, this is the easiest, am I the asshole of all time? Am I the asshole? I, I'm going to miss once we're out of like the one month window where Christmas had just happened because uh, I love the ones where adults, and this is a little touchy, okay? I love the ones where adults act like Christmas is like you, no matter what happens, everybody has to get together for Christmas. Like, even if my dad is a war criminal who shot my fiancé in the leg, hey, let's put everything aside for Christmas. We'll deal with this in uh, January. Because, like, the holiday season, like, people have different expectations for, I mean, like, some people are crazy and they want their in-laws to, like, respect them. And uh, some people are like, no, no matter how disrespected I get, you, I'm, you can't skip the turkey, you can't skip, or what do you eat in the U.S.? You can't skip the ham. Am I the asshole for skipping Christmas with my parents since they won't treat me like an adult? Everyone sucks, according to the, the flair here. Who knew? I have been with my boyfriend for almost two years now. He, we will be getting married eventually, but it's not a priority. My mom won't let us share a bed if we come see them for any reason. When we came over this last summer, my boyfriend suggested renting a hotel so we could have privacy and a comfortable bed. It drove my mom nuts that we bypassed her little rules. It's not bypassing the little rules in, in the slightest. If you can't sleep in the same bed together in her house, sleeping in the same bed together outside of her house is not, is not bypassing the rules. Also, she's, she's 27 years old. Like, 50 years ago, she would have had six kids by now. You at least let them sleep in the same bed. They're adults. She wouldn't drop it the entire time we were there. She made me promise not to do it again. My, but not to do what again? I don't understand what you're talking about. Aren't they doing it all the time? They're 27 and 33. They've been dating for two years. Maybe they live together. Like, I'm sure they sleep in the same bed. Do you, do you have to, like, tell your mom every single time or something? You make him sleep on a futon? I don't understand. My boyfriend's mom and dad are retired to Mexico, and they're really chill. So we made plans to come visit them over Christmas. They are not Christian, so they don't really care when they see their son with regards to religious holidays. We didn't tell my parents we weren't coming. My mom asked at Thanksgiving if I was going to hold to my promise not to stay at a hotel over Christmas. I answered truthfully that I would not stay in a hotel. I'm sitting here on the balcony of my future in-law's condo looking at the Caribbean, waiting for sunrise and enjoying the peace and quiet. I made the mistake of going online yesterday and saw a bunch of posts from my mom and my sisters about how I was a jerk for lying to them about my plans. Okay, well, like, you are a jerk also. Like, no disrespect but your mom asked if you were going to stay in a hotel there's an implied like you're visiting for christmas question there 
It's a lie by omission. Didn't we do this one? No, 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 no. It's just I'm telling you, there's a lot of... There's a lot of sacred Christmas ones. I mean, I just don't... Like, if your mom is a... Your mom can be a little bit crazy, but she's still your mom. If she's, like, super crazy, well, that's a different story, okay? You might have to, like, sever or limit your relationship. But if she just doesn't want you to sleep in the same bed, you say, sorry, mom, I'm 27 years old. I'm going to sleep in the same bed as, like, my... What it, right now I feel like is going to be in my future spouse. Also, I'm not coming to Christmas. We're spending Christmas at his parents' place this year. I don't know why you would just like blindside them on Christmas unless this is a fake post, which is always possible. Or alternatively, you'd, like why do so many people feel the compulsion in these posts to own their families? Like, this is not how normal people act. They, like, if they're not coming to Christmas, they'll be like, sorry, I'm not coming to Christmas this year. And then you could take it from there. They don't go like, no, don't worry. I'll stay someplace else. You don't need to save me a room. And then, like, on December 25th, when they call you and are like, where are you? You're like, I'm in, uh, you know, Puerto Vallarta right now. It doesn't make any sense. Just talk. Or at least text. I don't understand. I may have been a little tipsy last night because I decided to respond. I said it was ridiculous of them to try and tell me I couldn't share a room with my boyfriend. They didn't say you can't share a room. They said you can't share a bed. I'm, not, I'm already on your side. You don't have to misrepresent the situation to, to amplify it, okay? It's, the, sharing, not being able to share a bed is already unacceptable. You don't need to, to go out here and lie. I was keeping my promise by not staying at a hotel when we were there and that if they planned on putting everything on Facebook, I would be avoiding all visits for the foreseeable future. They took down their posts when people started crapping on them for trying to control me, but some people did agree with them. Now they are texting me and calling to say I was an asshole for making them look bad. I asked them if they're trying to make me look good with their posts. They stopped for a while, but there were more texts and voicemails this morning. I'm kind of liking the idea of skipping out on the drama from now on. But I miss my dad, and he's blameless in this. Am I the asshole? Yeah. Like, well, y yeah. Maybe you're, the, the question, the subreddit is not called, like, who is the biggest asshole? The subreddit is called, am I the asshole? And, and there's an implied possibility of plurality there. They're definitely all the asshole in this situation, except for the dad who's apparently blameless. But, like, I just don't... It, it just seems so... Sorry, let's read the edit first. I'm having trouble wrapping my head around it. Listen, lady! If you, if you have an opinion on this earth and you post it on the internet, you're going to get people who disagree with you. You're getting, take it from the master of getting one guide. You're getting one guide right now. Most people are going to be like somewhere on the spectrum of like what you did was acceptable, but you're a little in the wrong or you're a little in the right. Some people are going to be like her house, her rules. Don't worry about those idiots, okay? They're on their knees for their landlord right now. They love it, okay? You don't need to worry. You don't need to base your whole edit around like insane bad faith questions, okay? I'm having trouble wrapping my head around a couple of things that keep being repeated. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're, you're taking the stupidest comments that replied to you and then spotlighting them to strengthen your case. I know because I do it. It feels great. How was staying at a hotel so we didn't break her rules not the adult choice? No, it is the... Well, no, listen. It, here's why it's not the adult choice. It's, a, again, a false dilemma. The adult choice is telling your mom you're 27 years old and if she doesn't want you and your boyfriend sleeping in the same bed, then you go stay in the hotel. You got it. The adult choice is at least standing up for yourself a little bit, not being like 16 years old and, and being like, I found a loophole. Because it's not a loophole. It's just, a, it's, it's just a, a normal course of action. Hey, Krusty Jugglers, thanks for the gifted subscriptions, by the way. Thank you. How many of you guys fly across the country or drive for hours to just stay one night? Well, like, fly across the country for one night? No, probably not. Drive for hours to stay one night? It depends how many hours, I guess. But then the question is, like, who asked? I don't understand what... Or the, I guess people are probably insinuating to her you couldn't have just spent one day at their house for Christmas. 
That which <laughs> I don't know. I mean, she did fly to Mexico, but she didn't. She didn't stay for one night. Didn't you see? It's their idyllic uh, condo overlooking the the Caribbean. I would drive four hours to stay one night. We do the we, not for for Christmas. We stayed two nights. Yeah, but like we random weekends, we'll drive down like three hours plus the U.S. border crossing. You know. Eat lunch, eat dinner, go to sleep, wake up, eat lunch, drive home. It's just, and honestly, I, I, the, the drive gives you a chance to, to sort your, uh, your thoughts. Deal with some latent trauma from like the mid-2000s. How long is that drive? I don't know. Well, when, when it was snowy, it was like, you know, six hours. When, it, when it, the weather's nice and not that many people are on the road, it's like two and a half. Not to mention there was one time we drove to Washington, like literally drove like an hour to the border, crossed the border, drove like another hour just to eat dinner with them at the, the Silver Reef Casino and Spa. Ate some middling prime rib, drove back across the border an hour and then another hour home and went to sleep. I remember that. It was not even a, a big name casino. Excuse me. You don't like the the Silver Reef Casino and Spa? Please watch the over clip the Overwatch clip. Can I tell you as well, this is a true story. When I was driving yesterday, I was behind a car First off, people in BC will know it had two new driver sticker stickers on it, which is just weird. Like it's like a like they're sarcastically putting them on because you only if you're a new driver you legally only have to have one. They had two for some reason. It doesn't mean they're a super new driver. They had a bumper sticker that said "Boobies make me smile," and then the two O's in boobies were like a stylized three D. You can probably figure it out. It had the nipples and the areolas and everything. And there were a lot of other bumper stickers on the back of the car. But the one that threw me for a loop was they just had one that was the stock Overwatch logo. Ryan, yes. I have a story to tell you. Okay. I was, uh, my baby wanted to hear Baby Shark. Yeah. As we were going. So it was like Baby Shark. And then after Baby Shark, you know, like Coco Melon stuff. Yeah, yeah. After Coco Melon, do you know a song? Play? Okay, here we go. What 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 does Spotify choose to play after Coco Melon, Baby Shark, and then other Coco Melon songs? You would not believe it. You'll never guess. The title was of the song was "KKK Took My Baby." What? <laughs> and I was like, um, this does not sound right. So I just skipped it. But I don't even know. That's a, that's a song? KKK Took My Baby? Apparently it's by the Ramones, yeah. Oh I don't know why God. that would show up after, after Baby Shark, though. I was like, like the fastest uh, <laughs> next button that I pressed. I didn't even hear like a song start. I'm just like, oh, no. There is also, I've noticed, whenever I have it play Coco Melon Baby Shark, every song that it plays after that is in Spanish. I I've, got some, some Spanish. I don't know, like there's nothing wrong with it. But, like, they play Baby Shark in English, and then they go straight into, like, Spanish happy birthday songs. Yeah. Apparently it's a banger. But I don't think it should be in a loop with the... It's probably Disney not, songs. yeah. Well, you know. Unless, it's the, unless, it's the, the algorithm makes no mistakes. Unless it's actually for children. <laughs> it's just a title. No, it's the Ramones, so it's for teenagers. Oh, like the... <laughs> Sorry. No, no, I mean the Ramones, I got nothing against the Ramones, but I was just trying to insult them, I guess. Just trying to just trying to generate a little entertainment on the stream. Plus two, plus two, they love it. Anyway, where were we? Long story short. Also, while I was driving, I didn't even mention this. I got the finger for no reason. I like literally for doing a nice thing. I'm sure you have them everywhere, but we have like so it's like two lanes going this way, two lanes coming the other way. And then there's not a stop sign or an intersection, but they have little, like, the, the median is uh, recessed, so cars could, like, turn from one lane to cross onto, like, a residential side street. So there's no intersection, 
Long story short, I saw a car waiting to pass through the median and go to a residential side street. There was no one behind me, which is very rare in this city. So I slowed down with a telegraph that I was slowing down. And then this car drove across. And then he looked at me as he was going across and just held up the, the middle finger. And I have to this day, which was it's literally one day since it happened. I have no idea why. There's nobody behind you. Don't stop. It's not worth giving someone the finger. It's just a nice thing to do. It's just a, extend a little common courtesy, you know? I give up my right of way from time to time. Like if, if I'm at a stop light, like let's say we're in a long chain of cars at a red light and someone's trying to exit, uh, like a, a, a store or a mall, I'll keep my brakes on an extra five, six seconds to, to let him out of the, the shop parking lot. That's no problem. That's different. Well, I guess I, from now on, I'm just sorry. You, you reap what you fucking sow. From now on, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cut him off and then I'm gonna give him the damn finger. Fuck you for trying to exit Shoppers Drug Mart at this exact moment, dickhead. If you wanted to exit the parking lot, you should have thought of that before you went into the parking lot. Sowing. Yes, yes, reaping. No, no, what the hell? Anyway, no, this person is... Listen, part of... <laughs> I think it's just life, okay? You need... To, and I think people learn this lesson at different ages, if they ever learn it at all. Your existence is going to inconvenience other people. Full stop. Everything you do is going to uh, cause a distraction or a mess or just otherwise. And like what you have to do is minimize within reason the annoyance that you create while also recognizing that it's a, a humanity's cross to bear to be annoying. So when you get a little bit annoyed by other people, you also have to acknowledge that you are doing that same level of annoyance yourself. So, what I'm trying to say here is we all have to get along. So your mom's a little bit crazy. She doesn't want you sleeping in the same bed as your future husband. Okay, it reminds me of a little story. Meet the parents. Perhaps you've heard of it. Robert De Niro does not want Ben Stiller sleeping in the same bed as his daughter until they get married. Did they say, screw you, Jack? I'm going to, um, like, well, in the second movie, they do go meet the Fockers, to be fair. But it's, they don't present it as if it's the right solution to the problem. The solution is you, you exactly, you compromise, you coexist, you have a, you try to make it work. So, but some people, and I, you probably have noticed it in your own life, some people are drama dampeners. Fuck me? Oh, okay, I guess that's fair. Uh, see you at Easter. And some people are drama amplifiers. Fuck me? Fuck you. Fuck you. I'm gonna... No green beans? I'm not coming here ever again. You know? So you need... I feel like in any sort of dynamic like this, you need some... You need at least a dampener. And if you just get two amplifiers, they end up in this, like, unstable orbit where they're both gonna shoot off into outer space. So yeah, I would say it's an everybody sucks here. Your mom had an unreasonable request. That unreasonable request was probably not worth, you know, essentially owning her by letting her belabor under the false pretense that you were going to be at the holidays and then being like, psych! And then when they were like, why aren't you here? They're like, because you won't let me stay in the same bed as my... Then you should bring that up before. So that they know. Either way, like I'm saying the mom is wrong too. I'm just saying it's less obvious in my opinion that, that she's also wrong. Or at least could have been more right. Let's put it that way. This is there's good comments on this one at least. I'm sure. Everybody sucks here. Your mom is horribly controlling. That's not in question. But instead of saying I won't be spending Christmas with you this year, I'm going... Pardon me to the in-laws, and if I, if I come to you again, we will stay in a hotel. You lied in such a way that they thought you'd be attending. Instead of acting the, in the adult manner in which you want to be treated, you behaved like a child. True. 
Edit well now. This kicked off. Thank you for the awards. It does have 35,000 likes. Clearly a mixed bag of responses. Just a little clarification. A lie of omission is still a lie. If you're dealing with a narcissist, it is all the more important to stake your boundary clearly and stick to it. Otherwise, you will leave yourself open to their abusive tactics and flying monkeys. I don't know if I'm online enough for, uh, for, to understand what that is. That might be a thing, for all I know. Anyway, and for everyone that told me to F off or similar, Merry Christmas to you too. The best revenge is living well. She won't be in a hotel next year either. She'll be at the parents' house, sleeping in the same bed as the boyfriend because she fought correctly and defeated her family this year. Not the asshole. Okay, you're a, you're a crazy person. You're insane. Life must be very stressful when you consider every interaction a battle. Flying monkeys are people who side with the narcissist. You know what? I was dismissive of the, of the phrasing at first, but it actually makes perfect sense. I, what an apt metaphor. Fair enough. Otherwise, outside of my area of expertise, but I get it now. Witchies. Is there a reason you didn't tell them up front that you would be spending Christmas with your boyfriend's fa family? They're assholes for trying to control you, but I don't really see what you gain by misleading them. To avoid weeks of my mom trying to manipulate me into going home. How did that work out for you? It's like, I could have dealt with it in advance. Instead, I basically saw like a train wreck coming and decided, you know, rather than turn on the warning lights and hit the brakes, speed up. Like, I'm not saying you, your parents can't manipulate you when you're like an adult. I don't think that's fair. But like, I don't know, just <laughs> forehead, like, don't get manipulated. I don't know. I'm sorry. It's not fair at all. It's very dismissive. But, like, if your mom was, like, you can't sleep in the same bed as your boyfriend, and that's, like, a deal breaker, why don't you just say, okay, I'm not coming to Christmas then? I don't understand. Because this is what you did anyway, is you just didn't go to Christmas, but then you, like, you just kind of blindsided them with it, which, I don't know. I don't know your parents, so maybe... I guess a, the brain is complicated. That's true. That's a good point. I still think she could have handled it better. Let's put it that way. This falls under, if all I have to do to make you look like an asshole is tell the truth. That means you're acting like an asshole. That comment is very well phrased and allies so many posts in this sub. So me when my reaction is this. Okay, I don't know. It seems like a lot of reasonable people in the comments. I was surprised that we, we scrolled like four comments down. We did not see a single her house, her rules. Am I the ass? This, dude, there's so many Christmas ones. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, we, we already read this one. Am I the asshole for taking an Uber to the wedding? Am I the asshole for losing it and telling my in-laws to stop calling me mama? Am I the asshole for leaving my in-laws Christmas dinner after I found out they didn't make accommodations for me? Oh, dude, it's a picky eater post. I got invited to my fiance's family's Christmas dinner. It's my first Christmas with them. I have always been picky about what I eat. Can't help it, okay? Okay, I'm taking you at face value there. Has to do with psychological factors, childhood, and personal likes and dislikes. Before accepting their invite, I let my future mother-in-law. You ever notice how future mother-in-law acronym is just MILF, but in Pig Latin? Oh, sorry, I can't come to the phone right now. I'm watching Famil Anorme on... LCT. I don't know why you would pick up the phone to tell someone you're watching a TV show, but I wanted to loop Milf Manor in there somehow. Hey, Rex Mechanica, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. 
Thank you. One, uh, so this is not fair. It's a, it's a mean-spirited joke. One gifted subscription for every dish at Thanksgiving that this person would not eat. Sorry, Christmas. Every dish at Christmas this person would not eat. I ex before I accepted the invite, I let my future mother-in-law know I wouldn't be eating any traditional food at the celebration and showed her a variety of dishes to choose from to accommodate me. Listen. Okay. I am be making my own headcanon here. But did you really go to your future mother-in-law and like show her a picture of french fries, chicken nuggets, cheese pizza, hot dogs, because <laughs> it is picture your future mother-in-law being like, yes, I'm familiar. I'm familiar with macaroni and cheese. I'm familiar with, with fish and chips. I'm familiar with all of it. I promise you. Maybe that's not the case. Okay. But, but that's the way it, I'm familiar with, with bread, but not whole wheat bread. Cause that's weird. Like, <clears throat> She refused and told me to bring my own dish, which is very reasonable, by the way. That's not crazy. Like, as a picky eater, if, you're, if she's like, yeah, come to Christmas, but bring something that you want to eat, that doesn't make her in the wrong at all. That, that, the way you phrased it makes it sound like she's rude, but actually that's, that's completely accommodating. I said if I had to bring my own dish when I'm a guest, then I better stay at home then. We went back and forth, and I insisted, you don't know how to use a toaster oven. Just go ahead and say it. It's, it, it, you've had a technical debt there for a long time, and you, you know, you're too busy to fix it now. I understand. You don't need to make it seem like she's being unreasonable, though, like she's railroading you. You could just, it, you should just say, L listen, if you're like an adult and you tell some, like your future mother-in-law that you don't know how to cook, she'll help you. If you said, I don't know how to cook at all, I don't even know how to use a toaster, she would take you into the kitchen and she would give you a basic lesson at the very least. She would be like, here's how to use the toaster oven. Here's how to use the air fryer. Instead, you let your own ego get in the way. I'm like, there's a lot of headcanon for me in this one, but it's... Instead, you let your own ego get in the way and now you're fighting with your future mother-in-law. For what? You, you can't make your own chicken nuggets? Okay, anyway, we went back and forth. I insisted I wouldn't come if accommodations weren't being made. I just thought it was a simple request, and future mother-in-law could have agreed if she really wanted me there. What kind of... This can't be real, right? I hope not. No adult is like, if my future mother-in-law really wanted me to be there, she would cook chicken nuggets just for me. My fiancé agreed I should bring my own dish, but I didn't. When we arrived there and I saw that no accommodations were made, I got up, got my things, and walked out and went home. My future mother-in-law and fiancé were shocked that an adult that seemed otherwise reasonable would throw a temper tantrum like a little kid. I got tons of calls and texts from them both, and my fiancé came home lashing out, calling me selfish and spoiled to walk out like that over a dish that his mom didn't have to make for me, and that it was my responsibility to feed myself. How is it my responsibility to feed myself when I'm a guest? I'm a guest. Didn't you read the guest handbook? The guest handbook says the, the, whatever the guest wants, the guest gets. Makes no sense to me. I told him this. He accused me of starting shh and ruining my first Christmas with his family and disrespecting his mom. Now he's continually saying I fricked up and should have sucked it up for the family's sake. Edit to clear a few points. A lot of people eating my ass in the quote retweets right now aren't familiar with the specifics of the case that make it appear more reasonable for me because I didn't write them in the first place. For those saying I have no respect for my in-laws, I do, especially my future mother-in-law. I respect her, but this is so far the biggest conflict we've had. In theory, I respect her. By way of my actions, I could see how you would be confused, but I work long hours, even on holidays, so not much time to cook. You, we, we actually, the, and I hate to say this, there is info required here. Does she only eat like masala dosa or something like that? That, you know, a, a 16 hour preparation? Is, is there. Does she only eat reverse seared, uh, sous vide beef tenderloin? Like, 
Because if you, if you were at the Christmas, then you have enough time to cook something. Like you could eat, eat anything. And maybe it's not chicken nuggets, but even like you could, you, Rachel Ray, 30 minutes or less, you know, you could. I refuse to believe this. Because like, if you don't have the time on Christmas, how do you have time at all? You don't, because you, you, you're lying a little bit. Or you could have yeah, just gone through a drive through on the way or something. Like, I wasn't asking for an elaborate dish or several dishes. Just one simple option. I wasn't asking for anything complicated that would have taken a long time to cook. That being said, I don't have time to cook it, okay? Because I'm busy, unlike her. Unlike her, I don't see what she's doing all the time, so she's probably just watching TV. You're the asshole from one picky eater to another? I went to a Christmas dinner with my mom's family. There was nothing I wanted, so I just socialized and ate when I got home. Why should she have to make a whole new dish for you? This is pretty entitled behavior. Sanest uh, picky eater? This is what I was like when I was a picky eater, too. Like, if any... Listen, I don't want to make you more self-conscious than you might already be, because I was in your shoes, not but 17 years ago. You're already making people, like, a little uncomfortable by breaking the social convention of eating shared food at, at a special occasion, okay? But if they are, like... If they're not forcing you to eat, which is another annoying part of being a picky eater, when you're, like... I don't want anything, I'm not hungry, and they're like, no, you absolutely have to eat something, that's annoying as well. I'm just saying. You could, it, as long as everybody's, uh, you know, just being copacetic, there's no problem. But you can at least eat, like, the mashed potatoes or something. But then I'm also like, like, they should... <laughs> You should have brought your own food, at least. Like, I, if I was... But that's a whole nother, am I the asshole? Because, like, there's always an am I the asshole that's like, am I the asshole for being mad that my nephew brought McDonald's to Christmas dinner? And I'm always like, nah, man, why not? I, I would rather eat the Thanksgiving feast than eat McDonald's. I could eat McDonald's any day of the damn week. Anyway. <laughs> Just a whole ball of wax. Let me recap. You demanded some food was made to your liking when people told you no instead of cooking food you caused a scene? Yeah, you're the asshole. Start acting like an adult. How many variations of this story do you plan to post? Before the holiday, you posted after being told they weren't going to make a different meal and how you thought it was nuts. Everyone told you to bring your own food and now you didn't and made a scene. You're the asshole. Dude, that's so funny. <laughs> Imagine... So that makes me think this is more real now. Imagine making a post that's like, hey, my fiance and her mother, or his mother, think that I should bring my own food. So already, you should bring your own food, probably. But then you ask Reddit, and everyone's like, you should bring your own food. And then you're like, nah, I'm not gonna. And then posting it again, and everyone's telling me you should, telling you you should have brought your own food. It's crazy. He needs to be audited. This is insane. You're the asshole they did offer to accommodate you by allowing you to bring your own dish. You're the asshole wholly entitled. You'll be single soon enough. You don't, you don't know that, okay? I understand that like it feels good to type it. You don't know that. They could, in all other ways, be an ideal partner and just be, like, insanely crazy about this one specific thing. Okay, no, literally nobody uh, disagrees. I have to go... It's so funny, too, that, like, there's dinosaur chicken nuggets in the related posts. I have to look at their original comments first, just to see. They have not commented on anything. They need to they need to tell me what their diet is. I'm sorry. Cuz if it is, I mean, I'm, it's not going to get much better, but it could get a lot worse if it's dinosaur chicken nuggets. Deleted their previous post. Maybe, maybe. Okay, we did this one. Am I the asshole? for not wanting my husband to go to his ex's funeral. That was a crazy one. Remember that one?
Am I the asshole for prioritizing my son's dog over my wife's pregnancy? Deliberately written to be as incendiary as possible, for sure. This is a, the rare not the asshole, because someone was asking for some not the assholes. When my son, 14, was eight, we got a dog. He's half Great Dane and half some dog. My friend's dog met during an unauthorized absence. I it's so good. You ever see the post that's like dog owners? Oh, it's so cute. What kind of dog is it? Oh, it's a half Labrador, half Poodle. It's called a Labradoodle. Cat owners. What kind of cat is that? Orange. It's half Great Dane and half some dog. My son loves this dog and does all the care for him and is a very responsible dog owner. My wife is 12 weeks pregnant. Ever since we confirmed the pregnancy, she's been acting weird around the dog. She avoids him, puts her hands over her stomach when he is around, and jolts whenever he makes noise. Today, she told me she wants to rehome the dog. I asked her what she's talking about. She said she has been having anxiety that he will jump on her. This is completely unreasonable. He doesn't jump on people. We trained him not to jump on people or run into people very young because he's half Great Dane and half some dog. And I felt this was important for all dogs, but especially one who could grow to such a large size. There's no reason to think the dog will jump on her. She said there's no way to know for sure the dog won't jump on her. And if he does, our baby could be hurt. The dog has never so much as growled at her. She said even if the dog doesn't jump on her, her anxiety about it is bad for her health. She said she needs the dog elsewhere for her safety and the baby's. I told her there's no way my son got this dog right after he lost his mom and imprinted on him hard. Sometimes I think he loves the dog more than me. I'm not taking his dog. The dog didn't do anything. My wife said I'm prioritizing the dog over the pregnancy. The dog is, is not a threat to her pregnancy. If there were any other unreasonable request, I would just do it because she's pregnant. I just can't break my son's heart over a fear that she has that makes no sense. Am I being an asshole? This man needs, like, is, is there, like, a service in the world where you just give a, a, a man a nice thing because he's going through a hard time? He literally did nothing wrong at all and has been faced with, uh, with Sophie's choice. He did receive Reddit gold for this post. I'm not reading this one. It's just... <laughs> that just... Honestly, bro, that just sucks, honestly. I just, I, it's all I can really say to you. Yeah, she's a little crazy right now, but, you know, I'm glad I'm not the one who has to tell her that. just too sad tsb that sucks bro am i the asshole for calling my boyfriend dumb for boiling salmon no this is more my speed can you please take a look at abandon my spouse at costco okay i'll, I'll look for that one next abandoned my spouse at costco <clears throat> So this happened yesterday. I came home from work in the evening and saw something cooking on the stove. I asked my boyfriend, and he was boiling salmon. I was taken aback, like, completely. I asked him to repeat what he said. Could you repeat that? And he so casually said it again. I was like, ooh, who boils salmon? He made a face and didn't reply. I told him it wasn't right, and that I never heard of salmon being boiled, like egg and water type of boiling. Not, not any other kind of kind of trendy style of boiling that you might have been considering. I'm like I'm talking about like like when you heat water up to the point that large bubbles are starting to breach the surface and then you submerge the food in the water until it's cooked by the temperature of the liquid. I don't know what you guys were thinking of when I said boiling 20 times, but it's like when you put like an egg and water type boiling. He said it was all right and he likes it cooked that way. I called him dumb. For this, which he reacted by snapping and saying, who the F says I can't boil salmon? I said, erm, common sense. He replied, frick common sense. I bet it's no longer common sense to eat an apple from the apple tree in this time and age. What the fuck are you talking about? What is this, the most <laughs> incoherent argument of all time? Like, I'm not saying that he did anything wrong. It's just, like, what does that mean? It's probably not common sense to eat an apple from the apple tree in this time and age. We had an argument, and he started ignoring me, saying he felt hurt and disrespected when I called him dumb and is now waiting for an apology. Am I the asshole? I mean, yeah. 
Your ass literally like walked in from being out and started a fight in like two minutes for no reason because he's boiling salmon that you're not even going to eat. Who cares? I don't understand. Like I wouldn't. It's not my preferred way to eat salmon. It just makes you look like a kind of a dickhead. Now you're like, oh, I'm home from, honey, I'm home from what you, such a stressful day of work, you dumb idiot, boiling salmon. Shit for brains. Like, what, you couldn't say, like, hey, uh, how was your day? Oh, yeah, he's such an asshole. Oh, yeah. You're okay, though? All right, well, I, listen, I didn't know when you were going to be home, so I'm boiling a salmon, but you could just, you know, you, there's leftovers in the fridge if you want. It's just, I, I love, fuck common sense. I bet it's no longer common sense to eat an apple from an apple tree in this time and age. What does that even mean? <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't understand. It's provocative, I guess. It's just crazy. It's just such a, such a meaningless statement. I call my boyfriend dumb because he likes food cooked differently than I am. Am I the asshole? True, true. Let me rephrase the title for you. Am I the asshole for verbally abusing my partner because they like a different food than I do? That's true. Am I the asshole for walking away from my wife and kids in Costco? Dude, where is it? I, 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 I'm trying to line it up here. Can you see my mouse pointer? Right here, dude. It's in the sidebar. It's meant to be. Okay, well, close this. You're the asshole. Poaching boiling salmon is very much a thing. That's the other thing. I know. Listen, boiling gets a deservedly bad rap, but I think that one of the reasons it gets such a bad rap as a reason or as a, a manner of cooking food is because for like one generation or probably more generations, but you know, only one of them was like alive at the same time as me. That was how they cooked everything. You know, they boiled hot dogs. They boiled all vegetables until they lost all of their color and texture and like 90% of their flavor, boiled beef, etc., etc. But honestly, I like some boiled foods. It wouldn't be my, my preferred option, but a boiled a potato in the right context can hit the spot, man. I'm not talking just about mashed. I mean like a whole boiled potato. Absolutely. I'm, I'm down with it. Salmon? I would probably try. I mean, I mean, you have, it's a little different, but like, you could have a fish soup and I mean, you could cook the fish in like a pan and then add it to the soup after the soup is properly distilled. But most people are probably just going to throw it in, you know, with the, the mirepoix, and then when there's no pink left, or I guess in the case of salmon, when it's all pink, then you add the, the wet ingredients and get it like slow simmering or something like that. I, I think boiled gets a little bit of a bad rap. Not a, not much, but a little. Just my two cents. So I'm, I'm taking his side even more. I don't think it's, it means you have rocks for brains if you're making boiled fish. He might just be from the Baltic states. You're the asshole, Gordon Ramsay. No, you're the asshole, Gordon Ramsay. I thought it was going to be like, Gordon Ramsay defines being a shithead as boiling beef. But beef, lamb, I could understand. But fish, sometimes fish, the delicate flavor of fish can... Have you ever heard of dashi? You're the asshole. I preferred pan seared or roasted salmon to boiled or poached salmon, but it's a perfectly okay. Yeah, no. So does everybody, Seth. So does everybody on Earth. Boiling is not poaching. Here's the thing: you called a crow a jackdaw, but if you're trying to poach a piece of fish at a rolling boil, you're going to end up with a pot of mush. She shouldn't have been insulting, but if her description is accurate, boyfriend is not a very good co cook and was likely stinking up the house pretty bad too. I doubt you do boiled, boiled like a salmon fillet that is going to stink up the house pretty bad. What do you do? Oh, even if he's st stinking up the house too bad, you don't call him dumb as a brick. You're the asshole. Is boiling salmon really a battle worth fighting? Anyway, 
Am I the asshole for walking away from my wife and kids in Costco? <laughs> okay, the, the jury says yes on this one, just for the record. Why is this one so the screen region is all messed up? Is it because the post is so long? <laughs> 